You know, Nelson Mandela once said that no matter what your race, your age, or our era, that we all are connected by two things. Number one, we all want to be happy. And number two, we want our children to do well. I can tell you that the parents that are in this audience right now would give up our happiness to make sure that our children would do well. See, for me as a child, that haunted me. Just like it haunts the over 438,000 kids in our United States foster care system. See, that, that was my suitcase. It's what I carried everything that I owned in the world in. See, that trash bag also tried to define me. It tried to make me feel that I was worth less than trash. It tried to make me see that I was not worthy of anything. See, the statistics are really bad for kids like me. Out of the 438,000 kids in our system, only 54% of them will graduate from high school. Only 11% actually apply for college and only 2% will actually get a four-year degree. This year alone, we will see 25,000 kids in our system age out. They will age out unprepared for adulthood, no parents to fall back on, no net to support them, and to know that 70% of those 25,000 kids will be homeless within two years. These numbers are just not acceptable. The fact that 80% of our prisons are filled with people that were touched by the foster care system. Do you realize that two out of three kids in care will be dead or in jail? Yeah, it's hard to imagine. See, for a kid who's been in the system, we all have a story. And I guarantee you that my story is not a lot like yours. I was a kid whose mother had been married six times. She had 10 kids. I remember before I was the age of 12, we lived in and out of every shelter in Maryland, Virginia, and DC. Life was hell. I remember that my parents didn't care about us. They were drug addicted, alcoholics. But I also remember me thinking that my mother was a product of her environment, but that was just me giving her the opportunity to say she was a product of her choice. See, for me as a 12-year-old who entered the foster care system, I had the choice to let that bag define me. I had the choice to let the anger of my life from that point to define who I was, but I also had the choice to make sure that I chose better. When I turned 18, two weeks after my 18th birthday, the fall of 1984, I became a homeless teenager. That's right, just down the street, I became homeless. I knew at that time, how was I going to learn? How was I going to eat? I remember going to school and I would hope that the kids did not make fun of me because how I smelled. I couldn't remember the last time I brushed my teeth and God, please don't let them see the holes in my shoes, or much less talk about the food that I stole off their trays because I was hungry. Life was hard, life was rough, but I knew that I deserved better. I deserved what all the other kids in school had, and that was love. Within a week after graduating from high school, I joined the United States Navy. And by the way, I did not join the Navy because I was proud of my country. I joined the Navy because I was hungry, I was lost, and I was scared. I remember going to Fort Meade, Maryland to the MEP station and getting the key to the Red Roof Inn and unlocking that door and walking in there and laying on that bed and crying. Crying because I had a bed to lay in. I was going to eat a meal that night, and that trash bag was gone. I threw it away and said I would never look back. I would never allow that trash bag to ever leave my lips again. Little did I know that I would be in the Navy, I'd become a successful businessman, I would fall in love, 
I would meet my husband. I would get married. Life was good at that point. And we decided at that moment that I wanted to do what I always wanted to do, and that was to be a father, to be a dad. So at that point, I wanted to make sure that I created my forever family. Little did I ever think that 34 years later that I would have four of the most amazing children arrive in my home, which, by the way, carrying that. I remember the night my husband was pulling out the torn and tattered clothes, and I remember saying to him, how could I have sat back for all these years and not told my story? I had to tell my story. I had to tell the story of my children, of so many other kids. I had to make sure that kids in care knew that they had a voice. See, when it comes to giving, I think that it's an absolute privilege. It's a privilege for the country that we live in. It's a privilege to go on the paths that we're going to go on. But it's a privilege for us to give back. And so with that, As my husband was pulling out the torn and tattered clothes, we knew at that moment we were going to lead by example. So we started a charity, a charity called Comfort Cases. We wanted to make sure that we were giving hope and dignity to our foster youth. See, with Comfort Cases, we know that it's called hope and dignity. We wanted to make sure that every single child who got a case received a brand new pair of pajamas. I remember that first night when our daughter got her first nightgown and she tore the tag off. By the way, that was the first time I saw her smile. We make sure that every single child gets a toothbrush, shampoo, lotion, conditioner, and a bar of soap. If you do not think a bar of soap is important for a child who enters the system on their first night, the next time you go to that hotel, call them up. Tell them to leave the bar of soap from the people before you and use it. It's called dignity. We also make sure that every single child gets an activity and a book. See, I truly do believe that books were meant for us to love them in our mind, love them in our heart, and then pass them on. See, books are not supposed to sit on a bookshelf collecting dust. And then finally, a blanket. A blanket. See, my son Grayson, he was six years old when we started the charity, and he said to me, Daddy, we must put a blanket in every single case. I said to Grayson, why? These kids are not cold. He said, no, Daddy. Every single time that they wrap themselves up in a blanket, they know we love them. Wow. That's exactly what each and every one of us want. We want to be wanted. We want to be loved. And so with that, a movement started. A movement started. And since then, we have given out 42,000 cases in 41 states, including Puerto Rico and D.C. And I'm truly here to tell you that I believe that our community is not our zip code. It is our human race. And we brought our community together to let these kids know they matter. See, we're all pebbles. And I believe that if we throw our pebbles into the water at the same time, what a wave we all can cause. Thank you.